Welcome to the video lecture series, Culture, Worldview, and Origins. We're Tim and Holly Nyquist. This is part four of the lecture series on time. We're looking at time from a non-Western biblical perspective to understand what the first chapters of Genesis were referring to, when and how were they understood, when it talks about days. Um, were they literal days or were they not? Um, were they time periods? Uh, this is what we're we're trying to just show or, or go over in this series is the 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 way of understanding the documents the 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 scriptures depends on our standpoint depends on where we're coming from is how we will perceive the documents again taken from Stephen Jay Gould and he's saying that not all reasonable people perceive things the same way and uh, it's kind of like why and he lists four factors and that was a theory habit prejudice and culture all come together to influence and these are factors that all of us um, carry with us that we cannot set aside to be unbiased. Um, we are again kind of like a, a computer system and we cannot process anything without assuming a, a, an operating system. And so it's either a Macintosh or a IBM compatible where we assume a system to process the data through a grid and uh, we, we can't just objectively sit back and analyze the data and come to a conclusion. We, we have to assume a system first and then look at the data, choose the data, observe the data, and then interpret it according to rules of interpretation. So we, we can't interpret something, can't interpret the data without assuming a, a grid or a, a set of rules of, of how to interpret it by. So that is what we're, we're going over and looking at is that we have different rules, we have different thoughts. And so the, the, the question coming to the, the days in Genesis, were they 12 hours, 24 hours, millions of years, what were they, really depends on uh, the possibility of when we, we come to the context, we come to the text, what is possible? What does our system, our belief system, allow as being possible? And that is how we, were, we will interpret the, the data. So many of us that come to it from a Western perspective, we're going to say it's, it's obviously not speaking of literal days because that cannot happen in one literal day or the sequence is not correct. That, because, and we're looking at it through a, a logical, a, a, an empirical mode that is human based closed system and and what I meant by logical mode is is human logic we're, we're basing it on human experience on what is humanly possible and we would say no that, that can't be right because that is not humanly possible but the Hebrews did not have that perspective they lived in an open system and they believed that all things were possible through God um, who had created all things. So to them it, it was not an impossibility in, in that it was an obvious reading to them that it was literal. But what we looked at in the, in the previous lecture was what was one of the strategies to be able to harmonize uh, modern day science with the biblical record and that was called the day-age theory. And now the, the second strategy that we're going to be looking at is called the gap theory. What does the gap theory do? What the gap theory does is that it, it in some variations it can preserve the days um, that they were maybe 24-hour days, they were um, according to how the Hebrews interpret them, but the millions and billions of years still exist. And so where can we put them in the creation process? And so the gap theory starts in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, where it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Boom, that it, it's, it's done. And uh, so that in the beginning, God created everything and everything was good. 
and so that creation is now finished. And then we continue reading, the earth was formless and void and darkness was over the surface of the deep. And so then the question is, what happened? Because God creates everything good and, and orderly and now the earth is formless and void in darkness. What happened? And so they, there is speculated that there's a gap there of time. Something happened. And since scriptures are accepted as, as being inspired, what is in, in, included in scriptures is the fall and, and sin of Satan. And so the fall and sin of Satan is say, wow, okay, that's what happened. That's what happened between verses 1 and 2 was, was the fall of, uh, of Satan. And his fall destroyed um, the original creation. And so the whole geological column, everything that we have that, that shows of ancient history or of death, um, was part of the fall of Satan. And that it was uh, millions of years, it could be millions of years of geological time that is registered between verses 1 and verses 2. So that is called the gap theory, and it's uh, theorizing that there's a gap. And what can we put in that gap? You can put anything into that gap that requires time more than the six days of creation. So the dinosaurs, the cavemen, the whatever, we can put into that gap, and, and it's, it, we accommodate it. it. It's accommodated within. And then after, God starts over, and it's the reconstruction of a new heavens and new earth based on the six days. Maybe not new heavens, but at least uh, it's, it's the reconstruction of the planet earth based on the six days of creation. Um, so what, what about that strategy? Is it good? Well, again, going back to the, the original quote uh, earlier in uh, the previous lecture, um, there are scientists that say, why bother? Stephen Schaeffersman says, well, why bother? What, what Are you playing a game? Are you doing naturalistic science? You're taking our science products, our data, and trying to accommodate them to, to your Bible? Um, do you believe your Bible to be inspired? If your Bible is inspired, that means open system. That means that all of our data then is invalid because our, our, our data is based on a closed system. Uh, everything evolved from zero or from a uh, uh, singular. And, and, and so if you're saying that there is a God and that he did reorder, he did come into the system, then our whole dating system is off, so why are you accommodating? Why one, only one of them can be true. Well, going back also to just from a biblical point of view, uh, what, what could be said about the gap theory? Well, again, in the beginning, God created. Okay, in the beginning, um, that term is reshith, the Hebrew term, which is non-Western, so it is not chronos, not marking minutes, like in the beginning, at the beginning of the stopwatch, you know, that God created the heavens and the earth, and uh, then he was done. It's kind of like, no, they're, they're, it's more kairos, it's quality, it's event orientated. And so how does that fit? Well, the same word, reshith, is used in Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 23, verses 9 and 10. It says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, When you enter the land which I am going to give you and reap its harvest, then you shall bring in the sheath of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest. First fruits, that is reshith. That is the same word used in Genesis chapter 1 in the beginning, in the reshith. And so the Hebrew term may not be referring to a uh, point in time, but referring to the first fruits, the first quality. It, it's the first abundance. Is the rest of the harvest done? No, it's still maturing, and it's yet to be harvested. It's still filling in, but reshith is the first fruits, the first of that which is um, 
mature. And so that is what they brought in. And so that same term being used in Genesis chapter 1, how could that be understood? Well, if we change the translation just a little bit, and I don't claim this version of mine is inspired, it's just an alternative reading and um, interpretation of that one term, Rashith. Okay, Genesis 1, 1 through 2. As first fruits, God created the heavens and the earth. Were they done? No, it was first fruits. It was the first maturing of a whole maturing process, the whole filling in process. And the earth was formless and void. Did it become formless and void? No, it was. It was not mature yet. First fruits was created the main bodies. The, the rest of the fruits is the maturing of that, that creation process. The earth was formless and void and darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. As the first fruits, God created the heavens and the earth. Completed? Not necessarily. Uh, the term can mean first fruits as the first of the process, the first of a ripening harvest, the first of, a, of an abundance is the creation of the heavens and the earth. Conclusion. The attempt to harmonize the two models, the, the model of science, of Western science, and the model of non-Western science, to harmonize the two models will always create more questions than answers. It will lead to eliminating the conflict between the two models by eroding or eliminating the differences in their basic beliefs. It is usually the biblical basic beliefs that are eroded or eliminated the most to accommodate. What we need to do is, is choose. Choose this day which is true. Whom you will serve. Whom I will serve. And if we have to change hermeneutical principles in interpreting Genesis and, and then change it back to interpret uh, what's important to us, more important, the, 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 the cross, then we're not, we're not consistent. We're not being truthful in, in applying a consistent hermeneutic in the interpretation process. So I think that that is what we're looking at is important, is that not trying to say which one is, is true, which one is right, but you assume your basic belief system and you assume that to be true and then you interpret the world through that belief system. And so what you need to do is assume one belief system and interpret from the beginning to the end of the book with the same system, with the same hermeneutical principles. Um, and, and that's what the, the challenge is, is, is not trying to accommodate one to the other because they are products of different belief systems. And if the, the, the system, the universal system, was open at any point in time, that pretty much invalidates the, the mechanisms or the different ways of dating, different dating methods. The different dating methods require a closed system and starting from zero. So it, it, if there was a creation and if it is an open system, then those numbers, uh, millions of years, don't mean really anything because it was an open system and things were created. Were they created with an appearance of age then? Um, I, I, I believe so. Why? Because God created the garden. And after creating the garden and the trees at that one day, they were producing fruit. Um, which normally, so if you cut the tree down, how many rings would it have? You know, I, I don't know, but it would appear to be that it was older than one day. 
It would because it was producing fruit. And what if I went into the garden on, on the eighth day, the ninth day, knocked on the door and asked for Adam? Um, what would answer the door? Would it be a, a little baby or a, a five-year-old or a 15 or a 20-year-old? Uh, I believe it would be a responsible age person that was responsible for guarding and keeping the garden. So would that be then uh, deceptive of God to have done that? Well, it, it would be if you don't believe what he said. If I don't believe what he said, yeah, then that, that would be deceptive. But if you read what he said he did and then went and looked at it, then is that deceptive? And the, the answer would be no, um, he, he told us. He told us what he did. But if we don't believe it, then, um, then what do we do? So anyway, that is the, the, the tension between different groups, different people of trying to accommodate different belief systems. And um, you, you can't really accommodate different belief systems without destroying the other system, without making nonsense out of it. So anyway, this is uh, part number four. I, again, out of five, if you want to contact us, um, we're Tim and Holly Nyquist. You can contact us through the doubleroadrover.com or through email at thn.academia at gmail.com. Again, thanks for accompanying me.